and welcome to Zion, where following Jesus, we invite, right. equip, right. and serve our neighbors and, and one another. another. It's good to have you with us virtually this day on the first Sunday in Advent. My name is David Potter. I'm the pastor here at Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church in Deerfield Beach, Florida. You can download the bulletin on our website so you can follow along and participate in our worship. And again, it's great to have you with us. We begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fall in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen.
Awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In this season of Advent, we have our Advent wreath. Our first candle is a candle of hope, and as we listen to the readings for today, we can listen for that hope that is within that. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Amen. so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for you. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of your iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in reading responsibly Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, 17 through 19. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one in your right hand, the one you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Our second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. As we've already said, this is the beginning of a new season of a new church year. It is Advent, and Advent means coming in the Latin language. This is the coming of Jesus into the world, and Christians use these four Sundays and these four weeks of Advent to prepare and remember the real meaning of Christmas. It may seem strange that in preparation for Christmas we would have today's Gospel reading. It feels more like a continuation from Christ the King Sunday than the beginning of Advent. But when taken out of context, it sounds like something from the book of Revelation. David Schnaz of Jacobson refers to it as a little apocalypse of Mark 13. He describes it as crisis literature, and the people in Jesus' time were in crisis. It's spoken in the voice of Jesus, but it's speaking to a situation 40 years or so after the events written about in the Gospel of Mark. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and to his community of believers, but he's also talking to those who hear it sometime later. And he's talking about future events, but not future events for us, at least not in the immediate context. What he says is in direct relation to the reality of the temple's destruction, which happened in 70 AD. Jacobson says that the destruction of the temple represents a catastrophe of divine presence and continuity with the past. Those are both threatened. They are, seem to be visually cut off. 
And Courtney Buggs notes that for some worshipers, the closing of houses of worship across the United States and around the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic felt like temple destruction. Church buildings, she pointed out, remained intact, but rituals and rhythms, religious habits and patterns were significantly altered and remained so for many. In a matter of days, the pandemic prompted faith leaders and communities to abandon brick and mortar and reconvene in virtual sanctuaries. Across traditions, faith leaders reimagined and envisioned what it means to live without the physical assembly in the physical space. The disruption that was expected to be for a few weeks or a few months has stretched into eight months and counting. And something was lost in an instant, demolished by the prevalence of virus. What was it that was demolished? Was it normalcy? Was it comfort? Was it security? Or the perception of those things? In the midst of it, the call to wait and watch and work remains. And the question for them then and for us now is, what do we do now? What do we do now? Even as Zion is out of its sanctuary and out of its chapel due to the forces of Tropical Storm Ada, what do we do now? How do we worship? How do we gather when we are so used to doing it in a few particular ways? For those in Jerusalem in 70 AD, it wasn't about waiting for things to get back to normal because it wouldn't go back to normal. The temple was demolished, it was gone, and wouldn't be put back together in a few days, weeks, months, or even years. The temple for the people is a center of religious life, but it's also the political and economic life too. And Jacobson says that in crisis literature, something about a given moment calls into question the righteousness of God. How are we to be right with God? Do we blame God for this catastrophe? Do we blame ourselves for it in relation to God? This kind of literature reaches deeply into the resources of a tradition in order to invoke a divine transcendence in the face of such difficulty. The hearers of the words of Isaiah, as well as those of Mark, needed to hear of a God who was still present, who is still engaged while facing the reality that they and we are not in control, and that our relationship with God doubtlessly needs healing. Our sin too often is seen in our attempts to keep God in a box that we can manage, taming God's power. But Isaiah reminds us that God cannot be contained. And you and I can be thankful for that, that God cannot be contained, because that also means that God's grace cannot be contained as well. The words of Isaiah reaffirm our identity as belonging to God, but even more than that, it's good news that we are clay and that God is the one who is the potter. As Corey Cavalho has noted, we are just an inanimate lump with no purpose without God. God not only has the power to mold us, but actually wants to mold us. In fact, God wants to mold us into the image and the likeness of God. And this is made clear when God molds the divine self on Christmas Day as an impoverished, displaced infant. God becomes the clay. And so, rather than settling for being dried out, brittle, unshapeable clay created for a time past, we beg God to restore us to something God can shape and mold so that we can be of use to the Christ child who has come and changed the world, as well as the Christ who comes again. And so we pray in the words of a well-loved song, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me, melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, now in this time, 
in this place, in this season. And to that may all God's people say, Amen. Amen. time, place, and space, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. We give thanks for Hope South Florida, Feeding South Florida, and the Holy Grill, among other feeding and housing ministries. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Especially we lift up to you Steve, Alyssa, Jennifer, Laura, Nick, Roxanne, Liana, Juliet, Debbie, Eileen, Rosie, Larry, Pete, Carol, Billy, Pastor Fred, Pat, Ted, David, Candace and family, Nadine, John, Linda, Brian, Katie, Bill, Beth, Taylor, Isaac, Dennis, Colton, the family and friends of retired officer Dan Lindsay, all members of our community of faith, especially those who live alone and may not always be connected to us virtually, although they are still connected to us in spirit, all those suffering and recovering from COVID-19 and those we name now silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for open minds, hearts, and spirits of the members gathered here virtually. Grant that we may have a clear sense of your mission and your plan for each of us, as well as your plan for Zion, your mission and plan for our neighborhood, for our community, and beyond. Let us know you hear our prayers and see our need. This day we lift up Mary Thompson and Ben and Rose Tobin and those whose lives they touch. Guide them and all of us in proclaiming the good news lifted up this day inviting, equipping, and serving in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray you would reveal what can be done for, with, and by the congregations of our partner church of the Lutheran Church in Haiti. Thank you for their partnership with us. Bless all who gather and then are sent to proclaim Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us consider and give thanks to those with whom we are at peace and to be encouraged seek ways to be at peace with those with whom we are not. And now in this time of offering, we ask that you look at how God has blessed you and how God seeks to bless others through you, through your time and your resources, your gifts. And we also invite you to look at how you may wish to support our ministry. waited and you created light. Sarah and Abraham waited for a future 
and you sent descendants greater than the stars. You have led them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of, oh, sorry, wrong page, the nep. <laughs> and Hebrew slaves waited for rescue. And you sent Miriam and Moses to enact your liberation. Israel waited in exile for renewal. And you empowered prophets and poets with your life-giving speech. As the whole world groaned in waiting for release and rebirth, you sent Jesus, born of strong Mary, fathered by humble Joseph, incarnate in our humility, in solidarity with the suffering and the poor, full of wisdom and grace for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Send your spirit into this broken world, into our hopeful, imperfect gathering, and on this sacred bread and wine so that we may be healed and made whole again and be filled with the courage to love. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and thanks to you, Holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your Spirit, here and now and into the great beyond. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may pick up a communion packet through our drive through between noon and 12.30 today. We invite you also to consider taking communion to someone else who's unable to get here. Let us pray. God of new beginnings, you draw near to us in word and sacrament to strengthen and renew us. Kindle in us the fire of your spirit. May your light so shine through us that all may welcome your son at his coming. We ask this in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome on this first Sunday of Advent. We are so glad to have you with us. I'd like to mention that, uh, again, that due to uh, the winds and rain of Tropical Storm Ada that we sustained, significant and extensive damage to our sanctuary and to Katie Luther Chapel, and that combined with rising cases of COVID in Broward County are having us do our worship via live stream for now. And we're glad that you're with us. If you can't, if you're not watching at the time this is live streamed, we welcome you at whatever time you are able to, to see this. We invite you to share it with others and to invite them to worship with us as well. Advent has begun, which also means that Advent in Wednesdays will begin this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for study and conversation about prayer followed by a brief prayer at the end of the day, also known as Compline at 8 o'clock. See our webpage for more information about that. And also, if you haven't received an Advent bag yet, it's not too late to pick one up and be able to participate with us. In that Advent bag, you will find four blue candles, blue being the color of hope, a white candle for Christ, for Christmas Day. We invite you to join us on Sundays and on Wednesdays and each day in lighting that candle during a time. You have a, a Christ in our home and we encourage you to use that for daily devotions as, as you're thinking about things. There is a journal to keep thoughts and prayers, insights. You'll also find more information about Advent, about the Advent wreath, and about each of the weeks that we are going to be focusing on different types of prayer. So we invite you to look at all of those, and 
when the new year, our, our uh, new year of January comes, an epiphany blessing for the home. So we invite you to join us in making use of those things. Keep also joining us for 9.59 on Monday mornings at 9.59, as well as those Wednesdays, and also for our high schoolers, yep, the Youth Empowerment Project at 4 o'clock on Fridays. Our life verse for this week is Psalm 80, verse 19. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Thank you again for the generosity that you help support the ministry that we all share. It reaches so many people, more than we could ever know. And we thank you for that partnership. And now we invite you to receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>